We have six cards on the table today, and we have some big energy in the sky. Now, as far as the sky goes, we have a T-square going on and also a pretty strong trine. Uh, T-squares are 90 degree angles, so they tend to offer us challenges in our life, but consider that challenges are opportunities for growth. So this T-square is giving us that opportunity. We had the full moon, which happened yesterday in Virgo, and then we have the sun over in Pisces, along with Mercury and Neptune, and Saturn moved into Pisces today as well, which means that we're gonna be feeling a lot of sobriety and responsibility in certain areas of our life, wherever Pisces sits in your chart. Now, when you were born, you have a natal chart that looks similar to this. Um, for instance, if somebody was born today, um, their natal chart would look similar to this by way of the, you know, Mars would be in Gemini and Uranus would be in Taurus. There would be this clumping of Venus and Jupiter and Chiron over in Aries for them. And then all of these planets in Pisces and Pluto over here in Capricorn. But what you may not know is that the time of day that the person would be born today is what sets this dial, so to speak. So if they were born... For instance, this morning, right around sunrise, they would have had a Pisces rising, which would mean that all of these energies of these planets would be in their first house, which is their sense of self. Now, if they had been born at noon, then their Pisces energy would be up in their 10th house, and they would have all of this energy in their placement of career, because all of these little sections are called houses and they each represent a different area of our life that we are developing throughout our journey. And so the time of day that you were born really sets those anchors in certain areas of your life. Um, to just continue on for a second, if we had this person born at sunset, which would be over here on the western horizon, then we would have all of these planets and energies in their house of relationships for instance, and if they were born at midnight, then they would have, you know, had their planets either in the third or fourth house, depending on where they live in the, on the planet. And all of those energies would be placed in their, um, you know, in their sense of home, for instance, or their tribe, their family, if it's in the fourth house, or if it's in the third house, it would be in the house of communications and siblings and relationships with neighbors. So that the time that you were born, it's really important to know your rising sign, for instance, because if you are, you know, like me, for instance, and I was born with a Virgo rising, I was born at 2.20 a.m., so I have a grouping of planets over here in Scorpio, but that means that all of these energies are going to show up in my house of relationships and my uh, house of others, resources, inheritances, and then the Gemini energy is going to be showing up in my 10th house, my house of career and legacy and reputation in front of others. So it's really key to know what your rising sign is. Now, for our energies of today's tarot, we have some of those energies on the table, um, some of the bigger energies. You know, I said that there's this grouping of planets in Aries. There's this grouping of planets in Pisces. And then we also have, you know, Mars over here in Gemini. And all of those influences are showing up in the cards. Now, uh, many people also may not know that the Tarot system is a self-development system. It's a way to reflect and learn about yourself. And the major arcana is made up of the zodiac signs as well as the planetary bodies. So when they show up, in the deck, they can be speaking to, yes, the energies that that planet represents. But why I started doing the Astro Tarot is because I started observing that the cards that were showing up in the daily readings were actually reflective of really big transits that we are going on, that are going on and that we're going through right now. And so they help me speak to that. Um, so for instance, our opening card that we have for today is this 10 of wands energy. So there's this energy of being overburdened and just carrying a lot. You know, if you imagine you have one staff, you can climb up the mountain, but if you're trying to go up the mountain with 10 staffs in your hands, it's really hard to see where you're going. It's really 
hard to even see the path in front of you because you're overburdened by all of this that you're carrying. And this could be, you know, things that you're carrying that are emotional. They could be things that you're carrying that are responsibility, but it's this inability to see that what you're actually burdening yourself with is preventing you from being able to really move forward on a direct path. The challenge that we have, um, as I said, is speaking to some of the influences going on is this tower energy, which was some surprise change in our routine or some unexpected shift that happened, which is creating a, sh a challenge for us. You know, it's like, putting your energy and effort toward building something and then just having it all wash away in front of your eyes. And so this is a hard thing to work with. And when you consider, right, that we have these strong energies going on in the sky by way of Mars up in Gemini, and then over in Aries, we have the Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron energy, which is our wounded healer and our deepest wounds, which are kind of being, in a lot of ways, expanded upon with the Jupiter energy sitting on top of them. And being in Aries, it's like our sense of self. And so there is this, it's like this big shift and un unavoidable change that has come in that we are feeling challenged by right now. Uh, the way that we're going to get through it actually came in as the five of cups. So consider that some disappointment came from this. Of course, disappointment comes from anything that you put your energy and effort toward that just crumbles in front of your eyes, right? Especially if you don't have any control over it. And this, this situation is not a controllable situation. Um, and yet, you know, the five of cups is an interesting card because fives are this energy of opportunity to change your course. It's like a choice is given because the Roman numeral five is, is literally like a fork in the road, you know, a V. Um, so what do you want to look at? Where do you want to put your energy and effort? Because it's really it's it's really difficult to move forward when you're always looking down and you know considering that we started with the 10 of, of wands followed by the tower yeah it doesn't it surprised me that we feel this energy of loss you know and disappointment and some kind of grief that is that is like sitting with us and lingering but there is something there behind us and we have to turn around and look at that now the ultimate outcome for the day came in as three cards. I pulled us three cards based on the energies that came in. We have the Emperor, which has been showing up a lot in our readings lately, which is representative of that Aries energy and also the Mars energy. Mars specifically is more the tower. So, you know, consider like aggressive communications or, you know, arguments, especially because Mars has been in the sign of Gemini, which is the sign of communication. Um, and yet it's important for us to consider that the sign of Gemini is a sign of being able to see two different sides of things, right? Like they're depicted as this person with two faces or the twins. And so maybe, you know, there's another way to look at things. And considering that we have, you know, the emperor on the table, it's telling us that we have to use reason to put things in, in order. We have to, you know, place things in an organized way so that we can see through things and having it followed by the page of cups which has also coincidentally shown up a lot in the last few readings for the last couple of weeks and this card is representative of Pisces which is where we have the sun which is currently you know in near opposition to the moon the moon's moving away from that because we had the full moon last night but it's also in square to that energy of Mars up in Gemini because they're both um, mutable signs. So they're in this square relationship. They're in this 90 degree relationship, the sun and Mars is, and the sun is in Pisces. So we have this way that we're looking at things that is really challenging us in a new way. And it's also challenging our sense of self and how we show up. And and, you know, it's making us look at the aspects of ourself and reflect on aspects of ourself that, you know, are really um, something that we need to let go of so that we can develop other areas of ourself. Because this energy of Pisces is, you know, 
the reflective energy. You know, you're looking into the pool of the ocean or the pool of, of still water and and something's reflecting back to you. So what are you gathering from that? Because this experience is a doorway of really getting to know yourself better and getting to know the situation better. And, you know, the emperor is reminding us to look out, you know, into the world and and set our affairs in order as we as we progress. Now, the final card is the eight of pentacles, which is this reminder for us to that everything that is going to be of value takes time to build. We have the apprentice craftsman here is working on their skill. You know, they're they're doing the same thing and working on it and refining their ability and refining their process, but they're doing it through a devoted use of their time. And so I think the experience that's showing up is is really, you know, in some ways revealing where we lose energy unnecessarily, you know, to situations that are ultimately, you know, expendable when we consider, you know, everything is expendable when things sh hit the fan, right? You have to look at what's practical right now. And we have the help of that with this energy of Uranus up in Taurus. Now, Uranus is a planet that creates a unavoidable change. Um, kind of like Mars, but Mars is more aggressive. Uranus does it from a place of help, like it's trying to help us, you know, move the things that are that are too comfortable so that we can actually progress more. And it gives us these like moments of insight and epiphany. And the Uranus energy has been in this trine relationship with Virgo because they're both Earth signs. So they have that energetic that works together and is supportive so you know likely you got some kind of um, awareness or idea or insight through this process that we've been going through and that we're going to be continuing to go through now also something I want to mention about the Pisces energy which I had been speaking about in the last couple of readings is that Saturn did just move into Pisces today and Saturn is the planet of responsibility. So it's going to be bringing a new way of looking at, at the areas that you've been working with over the last week um, and for the next two and a half years because Saturn takes, you know, roughly around 29 years or 28 and a half years to move around this whole wheel and it sits in every sign for about two and a half years. So the wherever the house of Pisces is in your natal chart, whether it's in the first house, like the sense of self, or if it's in the, you know, sixth house, which is daily affairs and daily routines and your job, wherever that is, you're going to be leveling up because Saturn is going to be in the room. So interesting stuff, that astrology. If you are interested in getting a reading or having me look at your chart or explain your chart or you have any astrology questions, I will put the link below so you can schedule some time and we can talk about some stuff. I do all of my readings over Zoom so that they can be recorded and re referred back to for yourself. Um, you just have to download them once I send them over to you. Likewise, uh, I also offer tarot readings and astro tarot readings, which are a 12 card layout where we look at each area of your life similar to the house system and how these energies are showing up for you. We also look at the current transits that are going on in your chart and you can ask any questions during that time as well. I hope you all are well and taking care of yourself. It's an emotional time. I send you a lot of love. I'll see you again soon.